There are times when you work with your measured data and you realize that you have to maybe add it to another measurement and that measurement has an uncertainty. Or maybe you need to scale it up by a factor of two or maybe you need to raise it to a power of five. So this is when you need to know how to combine uncertainties. So here in this video, I'm going to show you some of the rules that you need to follow when combining these uncertainties. Let's first look at what you need to do when you multiply or divide your measurement by a constant. For example, I measure radius r is equal to 3.4 centimeters and it has an absolute uncertainty of 0.2 centimeter. And I'm going to label the absolute uncertainty u. And of course, you can use different symbols for it. So we might want to double the radius, multiply it by 2 in order to make it the diameter. Doubling the radius, it comes to 6.8 centimeters. What we need to do to the absolute uncertainty is that we also multiply it by the same factor, a factor of two in this case. Let me give you another example uh, looking at a division. Here I have measured 10 oscillations of a pendulum. Therefore, I've found 10 times the time period. I measure it to be 39.1 seconds with an absolute uncertainty of 0.3 second. So if I divide that measurement by 10, I get the time period. What I also need to do is to divide the absolute uncertainty by the same factor, which is 10. So the time period of the oscillation is 3.91 seconds with an absolute uncertainty of 0.03 second. Now, let's look at what we need to do when we raise a measurement to a certain power. Here we have measured length to be 84.0 millimeters, and it has an absolute uncertainty of 0.5 millimeter. So what happens if we want to raise uh, the length to a certain power? When we raise it to a power, there's nothing we can do directly to the absolute uncertainty. What we have to do first is to converts that into a percentage uncertainty. And if you don't know how to convert it into percentage uncertainty, check out my previous video. In this example, the percentage uncertainty is found by doing 0.5 divided by 84 times by 100. And that gives us 0.6% as the percentage uncertainty. We write length L as 84.0 millimeters plus or minus 0.6%. We square L that gives us 7,100 millimeters squared. But we don't square the percentage uncertainty. All we do is take the exponent, and in this case, it's 2. We multiply the percentage uncertainty by the exponent. So in this case, it's 0 0.6 multiplied by 2 because we've raised L to a power of 2. At the end of this video, I'm going to summarize everything into four points so that you can memorize it very easily. So next, we're going to look at what happens if we want to add or subtract measurements with their uncertainties. For example, we have uh, a rod, and I'm going to call it rod A, and it's 10.1 centimeters long. We have another rod, rod B, uh, it's 15.2 centimeters long. And they individually have uncertainties. Um, rod A's absolute uncertainty is 0 0.1 centimeter, and rod B's absolute uncertainty is also 0 0.1 centimeter. The rule is when we add or subtract measurements, we also add their absolute uncertainties. So their total absolute uncertainty is 0 0.2 centimeter. So if the question says, oh, what's their total length and the uncertainty in that value, you'll say their total length is 25.2 centimeters and their total absolute uncertainty is 0 0.2 centimeter. But what if you subtract them? Let's say you subtract the length of rod A from rod B. So the difference in their length becomes 5.1 centimeters. So notice here you still add their absolute uncertainties. So the rule is whether you're adding or subtracting measurements, you always add their absolute uncertainties. In this next example, I'm going to show you what you need to do when you multiply or divide measurements. We have two dimensions of lengths. The width is 5.56 meters, and you're given the percentage uncertainty, which is 2.5%.
and the height is 3.21 meters. And again, percentage uncertainty is given here, uh, and it's 2.6%. If you were to find the area of this rectangle, you'll multiply 5.56 by 3.21 to get 17.85 meters squared. And this time, instead of adding their absolute uncertainties, we need to add their percentage uncertainties. And of course, if the question only gives you their absolute uncertainties, what you need to do is convert them into percentage uncertainties first. And the second example I'm going to show you is when we divide. We have the equation speed is distance divided by time. And in this case, distance is given as 10.5 meters with a percentage uncertainty of 4.8%. And time is 2.3 seconds with 8.7% uncertainty. So we just carry out the calculation 10.5 divided by 2.3 to get 4.6 meters per second for our speed. And then we add their percentage uncertainty to give the total percentage uncertainty in speed. Let's summarize the four rules that we've just learned. So if we multiply or divide a single measurement by a single constant, then we multiply or divide the absolute uncertainty by that same constant. If we raise a single measurement to a certain power, then we multiply the percentage uncertainty by the value of that power. So if I do radius cubed, I'm going to multiply the percentage uncertainty of the radius by 3. So rule 3, if we add or subtract measurements together and those measurements individually, they have uncertainties, we need to look at their absolute uncertainties. We add their absolute uncertainties together. And finally, if we multiply or divide measurements together, and they also have individual uncertainties, we need to look at their percentage uncertainties. We need to add their percentage uncertainties together. I hope you find this video on combining uncertainties useful. Feel free to take a screenshot of the a summary page so that you have it ready in front of you whenever you do your data analysis. Thanks for watching!